Hello, um, I'm Brian Larkin's dad, my name is Mike, and I have an elderberry habit. It started about 30 years ago when I helped a neighbor pick wild elderberries for making elderberry wine. And then about 20 years ago, my lovely wife Rita um, showed me an article in the local hospital paper about elderberries being uh, antiviral, having antiviral properties. Today we're going to talk about a couple things. We're going to talk about the history of elderberries, to, to the best of my knowledge. We're going to talk about um, how you propagate elderberries, and then basically how you prune elderberries. Later in the season when these start to flower, we'll have another video about picking elderberry flowers, drying elderberry flowers, and some of the uses of elderberry flowers. But today we're going to just do those things. Elderberries have been used for thousands of years as both food and as medicine. They have they found uh, elderberries in the trash heaps of uh, Bronze Age cave dwellers. So that means way back then they were already being used as either food or medicine. And in fact, in ancient Greece, um, Hippocrates, the man who was considered the father father of modern medicine, and the man who's uh, responsible or is given credit for the Hippocratic Oath that doctors take, basically called elderberries the medicine chest of the country folks because they were used for so many different ailments and they were so effective at that time. And so all the way through they were, they've been used for viruses, flu, flu colds, um, all kinds of different things. Also, the World Health Organization has recognized elderflower as a treatment for, uh, for mild upper respiratory um, inflammation and colds. Basically call it a traditional, which means that there haven't been any double-blind placebo and all that stuff test on it, but it's because it's been used for so long by so many different cultures that they say, well, we acknowledge that, that this has a good possibility of, of working and we have not seen any adverse effects by its use. And then before we go any farther, I have a disclaimer to make. It's important to uh, recognize and to note that all of the studies that have been done so far on elderberries are very small, uh, populations, very preliminary studies, and cannot be considered a proven remedy for any uh, of the ailments discussed, despite statistically significant positive results in these very small preliminary tests. More studies need to be done. It's, and on a practical level, I think it's really important to, to realize that elderberries are not a miracle drug. Elder flowers are not a miracle drug. What they do is they help the body do a better job of fighting disease. Well, first thing to, to know is that um, elderberries are a perennial, which means that you plant them once and they come back year after year after year, as opposed to an annual, like tomatoes, where you plant the tomatoes, that year you get tomatoes. Next year you have to replant tomatoes. Elderberries you plant once, and uh, a good elderberry orchard can uh, last for 20, 30, 40 years um, if it's maintained, and you don't let it take over the entire world here, your entire world, your entire field. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to propagate uh, this particular perennial. So when you're, when you're starting out, you'll want to make sure that you have a branch. This is dead. Um, 
you'll want something somewhere between pencil size and thumb size for your for your root for your cutting. What I like to do is I like to cut the top one at a 90 degree, the bottom one at an angle, because as you're planting a lot of these, it makes it very clear which one which one goes on the bottom, which one goes on the top. With your cutting, you'll want two two different nodes, so two different uh, uh, buds. The bottom one goes in the ground, and this is where your roots start to grow from. The ones on the top are the ones that will open up and flower, feed nutrients from photosynthesis down to your roots so that they can develop. And then what we're going to do is Now this one, because these are so close, we're going to plant, we're going to, we chose this one so that it'll have more um, leaves, but it'll still have enough to go into the ground. If, if these are very far apart, you don't want to do that. These uh, four starts we'll plant together and hopefully, hopefully, uh, I guess these three, um, hopefully one of them will take root and grow. They're all identical. The, the genetics of all these will be identical. So no matter which ones, which one of these takes, you've got the same genetics there. So with that, We'll come over here, set these down, and the, the planting process is pretty straightforward. If you have a good spade like this, or if you have a tree planting spade, you just make an opening in the ground. You take these and gently stick them in the ground all the way down. You want to make sure that you don't knock off the, the bottom leaves because otherwise you have nothing for the roots to start from. Once that's in the ground, You knock it back so that there's good contact between the ground and between the ground and the um, the cutting. Now what will happen is these things will grow. If you see this one, this one has this is the one that had the two different sets of, of leaves, and these leaves will send up shoots through photosynthesis. They'll produce sugars and then proteins. Those will go down to the root system. The first year, most of the energy of the plant will be used to develop a root system, a strong root system. Elderberries can grow just about anywhere. What they need is, as much as possible, full sun, if you're going to do it for berries, definitely full sun. But there, you can they can be planted in, in clay. They can be planted in in uh, sandy soils. Actually, they grow from almost up to the Arctic Circle, all the way down to Central and South America. They grow from Siberia to to South Korea and southern China, and almost everywhere in between. The next thing you'll want to do is you'll want to put some some mulch all the way around that. This 
despite the fact that these compete very well out in nature, if you want a fast growing um, and productive plant, you, you'll want to keep the weeds down as much as possible. Um, that's a difficult job for the first two or three years, but it's well worth the effort. That not only keeps down the weeds, but it also helps to keep in the moisture. Moisture, sunlight, and weed control, those are the, for your first year, those are the most important uh, things for the elderberry uh, transplant. Next year, usually, usually, these will die. Those will become dormant. But from the root system, new shoots will be shot up. And if you, if you like, I'll take you up and I'll show you what that looks like. Already, this, these were planted last year. And as you can see, they're, they've died off, but the root system that they established has sent up two new shoots. This one didn't make it over the winter, or maybe it will come up again from down here. This one looks like it's, it's good to go. This one will start leafing out soon, and then uh, it'll grow into something like this. This is third year growth. This should have be the first year that it has flowers and uh, usually smaller uh, flower heads and, and therefore smaller berry heads, but it'll be your first first harvest from this plant. So first year you plant them, most of that energy goes into roots. They'll usually send up a secondary shoot from the roots. That secondary shoot develops into something like this. Those then will grow again and basically produce the first flowers and berries. After that, they just keep getting, the root system keeps getting bigger, more nutrition, more sunlight, and more berries. Now we, we've seen the uh, prune, the, the propagation, seen the first year, we've seen the second year, this one is probably four or five years old. And most of this growth came last year. So every year you get this type of growth. So what you want to do is you want to cut back everything from this except for one or two, uh, one or two uh, branches, one or two stalks. And even there, this one, you don't want that hanging over that, over the, over your, your alleyway. So you just come through with a nice, sharp loppers. I like the long handle one so I don't have to bend down so much. These that have many, many branches, you just want to get rid of. It makes harvesting so much easier. And you'll want to leave one or two. And if they're starting to get too tall, you can just lop those off. Ideally, your whole row will look like this. Well, we've gone through the, the, uh, the basics of elderberries so far. Later in the season, once these beauties start popping out flowers, we'll, set, we'll put up another video on this uh, on the b and website so you can see how to pick and dry elderflowers. And um, during harvest season, we'll have another one. Uh, introduce you then to my elderberry destemmer and uh, we'll go from there. I hope that you, oh, 
anybody who is interested in starting a little elderberry patch, uh, let me know. I do have elderberry starts um, and our elderberry uh, woody cuttings. And next year, I hope to have some um, bare root stock. I'm experimenting this year with some green cuttings. We'll see how that goes. I'll keep you up to date on that as well. And um, I hope you all stay safe and healthy. And thanks for listening.